Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia. It's Monday morning. It's week 12. It's time to hit that waiver wire. The trade deadline is looming tomorrow. More on that. It's Thanksgiving week, though. So happy Thanksgiving. And when it's Thanksgiving week, that means it's time for only one thing. It's Pat Morris's favorite holiday tradition, cuffin' <laughs> and stuffin'. This is the official cuffin' and stuffin' show. Forget about the turducken. That's old news. Nobody cares about that. It's all about stuffin' and cuffin' this time of year in the Pat Fitzmaurice household. And, of course, Derek Brown, D-Bro, the king of bros, the fantasy bro, is here as well to join us. He's going to bring some side dishes here to our Thanksgiving waiver Wire special. And we've got a whole lot of great content for you today. Before we get into that, I want to give away something because... It's the season of thankfulness and giving, and we are finally giving away our TJ Hawkinson jersey. That's right. The Minnesota Vikings jersey from pristineauction.com is going to Cristal Rodriguez. Cristal, congratulations. That Hawkinson jersey is yours. Please get in touch with us. Customer support over at mailbag at fantasypros.com. Again, that's mailbag at fantasypros.com. Cristal Rodriguez, send us your mailing address, proof of your subscription to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel, and we'll get in touch with you right away again. Cristal Rodriguez, congratulations. You're the big winner. And boys, that means it's time to give away something new. And if you want a chance to win a glorious 36-inch fantasy championship trophy for your league, courtesy of our good friends at Trophy Smack, the number one destination for epic fantasy tournament trophies, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Drop a comment below. Make it a positive one. It's the holidays, kids. That's it. That's all you got to do. So subscribe, drop the comment, and ring that bell till it goes ding. So you know every time a piece of content drops. And if you're the big winner and you can claim your prize, that incredible trophy from Trophy Smack. All right, boys. It was a very physical weekend of football. Lots of hard hitting. You can tell the holidays are here. Uh, and uh, Pat Fitzmorris, you are fresh off of a Green Bay Packer victory. How does that feel? Oh wow! It's uh, I'm I'm not used to this being such an unfamiliar feeling, Joe. Uh, yeah, it felt great, and, and you know, just felt the whole game like they were going to let it slip away. But Chargers gonna Charger is all I can say. Oh God, mm-hmm. no, yeah, I'm gonna lose my mind on the betting show. Make sure you go over there because I said it last week. I said <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm confident in the Chargers, and I knew it was gonna hang like a word bubble outside of my mouth, like one of those cartoon things. And sure <laughs> enough, I'm telling you, it's going. You have to beat me out. There's a lot of beeps are going to happen on the Betting Pros channel. Going to have to go subscribe there. Derek Brown, speaking of uh, expletives and beeps, uh, Devon Achan, very disappointing. One no. carry in the yard. Uh, heard a lot of our DFS lineups, so we can uh, bitch and moan and complain about that. Uh, <sighs> and heard a lot of people's lineups, too, who were so excited. They waited. They got him back. And then he's out. It was Max Payne. <laughs> Max Payne. <laughs> oh, it was not pretty, guys. Uh, I... I, I, as soon as that game, I was like, "All right, J- J- Jeff Wilson's inactive. Like, this is what is we it? need is now. It? Now we got that's that's the vote of confidence for mm-hmm. Miami. Jeff Jeff Wilson not being <sighs> or being a healthy scratch. I was like, it's wheels up, baby. It's it's the the plane's stuck on the tarmac. It's not gonna fly. There's a flat top. I, I know, I know, I know. It's okay. This is a safe place. I give up. Uh, I just, that's right. You can bury your sorrows in gravy." and mashed potatoes later this week. Let's <sighs> talk about the sleeper waiver wire pickup of the week for this week. And his name is Zach Charbonnet. It should be familiar to all of you because we've been talking about this guy for, I don't know, two and a half months. I feel like every single week he's on this show and we keep saying for the same reason, every single time, you know, if something happens to Ken Walker, this guy could be a potential league winner. Well, in week 11, something happened to Ken Walker. He has an oblique injury. He could miss anywhere from one to three weeks. Zach Charbonnet currently right now is rostered on sleeper in 51% of leagues, a little less in some other spots too. So we understand that he is a guy higher up on the threshold, but in a lot of leagues, especially from bye weeks and other things going on and people having to make hard decisions, Zach Charbonnet is out there in almost half of leagues. So if you've already got him rostered, awesome. Congratulations for listening to us and being ahead of the curve. If you don't have him rostered, this is the time. Uh, yesterday in that game, 15 carries for 47. He also had the six receptions on the six targets. That's the thing in that PPR format. Uh, Pat, we'll start with you with Charbonnet. Again, this is not a new player for this show. It's somebody that every week we keep sliding in there and saying, hey, if you're still out there, stash him, stash him, stash him. Now it's come to fruition. So now what is the value potentially of Zach Charbonnet and how aggressive should people be in trying to acquire him if for some grace of God, he's still available in your league? 
Yeah, the value is pretty immense, Joe. Uh, cuffing and stuffing. Hopefully, <laughs> mm-hmm. the Kenneth Walker investors jumped the gun a little bit and uh, secured Zach Charbonnet as a handcuff mm-hmm. early because he was always one of the most valuable handcuffs, a guy who was going to get a big workload if uh, anything happened to Walker, and a guy who came into the league with second-round draft pedigree, really good prospect, versatile run, catch. Um, you know, maybe the... One thing that could dent his short-term value while Kenneth Walker recovers is a tough schedule because the next three games for Seattle are the 49ers, the Cowboys, Mm -hmm. and the 49ers again. So Mm -hmm. that is a difficult schedule, but the 49ers used to be the skull and crossbones matchup for (laughs) running backs, just completely prohibitive. They've allowed the ninth uh, fewest fantasy points to running back so far this season so yes a difficult matchup but no longer a prohibitive one like I mean we just saw with the Buccaneers Rashad White who's been kind of an inefficient runner all year 58 yards from scrimmage a touchdown but he had five or six receptions that's the thing I think we're Mm -hmm. that's the thing and I think we're probably going to see that from Charbonnet especially if Geno Smith has to miss this game because you know they're not going to put this game entirely in Drew Locke's hands against the 49ers they're going to want to run the ball Mm. and I can see Charbonnet getting you know half a dozen check down passes in this one too so yes he's going to be uh very valuable volume is still king at the running back position even when you get a tough matchup so Charbonnet is going to get volume for as long as Walker is out and he's going to be you know a running back too this week all right, before we get the t-shirt made up officially, is it cuffing, then stuffing, or stuffing and then the cuffing? Which is the the proper This was, uh, this was you... Debro's phrase, so I got to defer to Debro on I, this I don't one. think it was. I think this is was Pat's it me? phrase. No, this is absolutely... You can't pass the buck I think I made this, this up and I threw this at Pat. Oh, uh, well, Pat said so. it on the show. The first time I heard it, it's Maybe Pat, not. so I, don't know. I am going to give Pat <laughs> credit for this. So officially, Pat, since I'm giving you back credit, you get to decide the order before the t-shirt gets made up at the shop. All right. So technically, people are putting in their waiver claims before Thanksgiving Day. So I think it should be cuffing, cuffing and, stuffing. and stuffing. Okay, cuffing, cuffing and, stuffing. and stuffing. That's going to be my team name everywhere next year. Uh, Debro, speaking of that reception upside for Charbonnet, you saw it yesterday on display. To Pat's point about Rashad White against the 49ers, with a lot of dump offs there. And I think that's the way you want to approach or even have to approach the 49ers now, because when you have Chase Young on one side, Nick Bosa on the other, there's a lot of aggression coming at you here. So you've got to make sure you get rid of the football quickly. I'm not afraid of those matchups. I I know theoretically on paper they look tough, but I have no fear about that. So what's the aggression level for you when it comes to bidding on Charbonnet if he's still out there? Is it time to just empty the tank and Mm -hmm. see what you got here, especially if you're a team that's on the fringe of the playoffs? You take the clip, you empty it. It's that simple. Like... He's an eight. He played 85% of the snaps, guys. And whether Kenneth Walker right now, we're speculating it's one to three weeks. What if it's longer? What what if that's the case? Sure. What if we get to week two, week three, and he's still not ready? At this point, you're at the edge, the precipice of the fantasy playoffs at that point. You could have Zach Charbonnet, who has multi-week of viability as an 80% snap running back. Like, like I know we're not even doing like talking rankings here, but come on at that type of clip basement level. He's a top 15 running back. Lock him in. I'm so, very proud of you too, because we got here to week 12 before you emptied the clip on a guy like, yeah, that, that's a D bro thing. It, you were, you were very, very conservative very this year. Uh, yeah. Even Puka, it was like week two, so he really couldn't empty the clip because it was week two. I was like, that's well, kind of hard to do. We were like, look, Technically, you, know, you already had him on all your rosters, so you didn't well, have to empty the clip. The clip could stay you know holstered. It's all to good. your point, look, if you did listen to the show before heading into that week, that's all Eric could talk about was Puka going into week one. Uh, all the mock draft clips of every last round pick, <laughs> just saying. Let's review the rest of the running backs here. We'll kind of uh, take them quickly one by one. Ty Chandler. Rostered in just 48% of leagues. Uh, last night, continued to get work in that game along in tandem with Madison. Now, Madison did play, which was kind of surprising for a lot of us. He did have the 14 touches on Sunday night. That's a lot. He had 73 yards rushing. Uh, Debro, if he is still out there, is this a full split backfield where, again, Chandler, if you don't get Charbonnet, then is Chandler the consolation prize this week? He's a consolation prize, but not a great one. It's like if you were to spin the lottery and instead of the $50 gift card, you got the $5 gift card. That's mm. the way I look at him. So you're That's like, oh, off. this is this is nice, but it's um, it's not as pretty as that the over $5 there. $5 gift card is insulting, isn't it? It's like, 
I mean, you think about it. A little bit, yeah. Five dollars doesn't get you very far, but because it's in a gift card, it's like, oh, how thoughtful. It's really not. You gotta (laughs) go. Listen, that's nice. Listen, and then you read the card, and you're eventually like. "Mm." But you know, like you know, it's it's your kid's you know piano teacher or your kid's coach or something. At least go to ten dollars. Go to ten dollars, everybody. The five dollars is a little rough. Um, That's fair. Pat, Ty Chandler for you this week, if he is still available. And look, in half of leagues, he still is, especially in those more shallow ones. I think people just kind of ignored this or maybe they had him and dropped him when they heard that uh, that Madison was going to be back. What do you think about this? Yeah. So um, taking you behind the scenes of the creation of our weekly waiver wire article, the tag team partner of Debro and I is Bo McBrayer. Bo loves Ty Chandler. Um, like he, Bo, I think was pushing for Chandler to be, uh, like more, like have a higher fab spend this week than Zach Charbonnet. Debro and I don't agree with that, but I see mm-hmm. Bo's point about this because Alexander Madison has been very pedestrian all season. Um, and Madison put a ball on the ground in the second half of last night's game when the Vikings were inside the red zone against the Broncos. And it turned out to be very costly. No points. Broncos recover. Um, So I could see Chandler forcing a share. I don't think it's going to be a full scale takeover, Mm -hmm. but I do think we're going to see a significant role for Chandler going forward. And he is explosive, man. Like when Mm -hmm. he gets the ball in his hands, there is a noticeable difference between uh, Ty Chandler with the ball and Alexander Madison with the ball. So I could see going up to 10 15 percent for chandler it's just it's going to be more like flex type value than a guy you feel really confident about starting in one of your That's running backs yeah See, and, look, and, flex, and i'm a little more moderate on it like i'm a little more moderate on my spend though. i mean the flex value this time of year is good and i think the thing to take away and not forget is that the vikings did bring in cam Akers, right the vikings were not necessarily sold on just madison so i think you have a little bit of solace in that moving on to another guy too you know, Taji Spears, again, a guy we talked about a ton. I don't want to spend too much time on him. 51% rostered. This is still that season. So go ahead. If you have Derrick Henry, you should have him because there's also a scenario you could write where there's a valuation going on at the end of the year. If and when, or it feels like the Titans are falling out of contention here, you want to get Spears more playing time. You want to see what you have here. And the only way to do that is to get him on the field. So his role could even grow, not to mention if there's, God forbid, an injury. Uh, also on this list, Leonard Fournette. Now, Pat, let's talk about this. We had been kind of bouncing around this Leonard Fournette idea for a few weeks here. 21% rostered still. Uh, they've been chatter of, oh, you know, things are going well. He's picking things up. Do you think Leonard Fournette is a guy that people should be stashing at this point? Or is it just kind of forget about it? It's too late in the game. I think it might be too late in the game, Joe. It's hard to see him uh, staging some sort of coup in the Buffalo backfield in the next, you know, four to five weeks when you would need it to happen in order for him to be fantasy viable, like in the important weeks in the playoffs. So I don't think it's going to happen. You know, since they brought him aboard... Uh, James Cook has actually played pretty well. So I don't think Mm -hmm. Cook is going to disappear from this offense. Latavius Murray hasn't been terrible either. Uh, You know, he's he's 33 years old. I know Leonard Fournette would actually constitute a uh, new and improved younger model. But man, like it's hard to see Fournette having a real fantasy relevant role here. So I'm I'm not real interested in stashing. No. And you aren't either. Correct, Debro, I believe from our conversation earlier. Nope, you can uh, pat, miss me on all, any Uncle Lynn stuff. <laughs> I want to throw this out there, boys. Uh, James Cook, 35 snaps, 20 touches yesterday mm-hmm. on those 35 snaps. Yeah. Welcome to our good graces, Joe Brady. Hello yeah. and salutations. Good, you know, thank goodness somebody finally did it. Uh, and look, Joe insane Brady's- using look. your most explosive players. <laughs> Crazy, I know. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Pat. Joe Brady's the guy that was calling plays for the old LSU days. Yes, for Joe Burrow. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Joe Brady turned mm-hmm. uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire into a guy who <laughs> snuck into the first round of the NFL draft, and then we find out Clyde Edwards Hilaire just isn't really that good. So if Joe Brady could do that for CEH, what might he be able to do for a more talented mm-hmm. James Cook? Oh. A guy kind of, you know, towards the end of the career, Ezekiel Elliott, he is rostered right now on sleeper in 43% of leagues. He did have a larger workload. Uh, last time we saw him, 13 for 54. Some questions about Stevenson's health lingering now. They did have the buy. However, next week they've got the Giants, then the Chargers those next two weeks as people are trying to get themselves in the playoffs. Is this a guy worth stashing to, Derek Brown? Do you think any love here for Zeke or no? 
Not for me. Yeah. I, I, I'm fine with just passing. Like, you can give me Tajay Spears. You can give me some of these other handcuffed running backs. Like, I would rather have Rico Dowd or Kenny Gainwell over Zeke. All right, let's talk about Gainwell, because I know that's a guy you wanted to highlight. Why Gainwell? Because DeAndre Swift has been just flat out not great over the last few weeks. And if he continues to fumble all the volume and not literally, but not do anything <laughs> with all of the volume that they're giving him in Philly, this could turn into more of a split backfield as we move towards the fantasy playoffs. Yeah. And Dowdle, a guy that was banged up going into this week, he still didn't mm -hmm. play, but that's another guy too. We've talked about before. Absolutely must add in your deeper leagues. He was ultimately rostered, I think, 5% of leagues going into last week. Whew. If you look right now on in terms of like how has that changed week over week, um, it has gone up to 25%. So still three quarters of leagues. This guy's available. Pat, real quick, I want to get your take on Zeke and maybe any other running back you think might be worth stashing this week. So I agree long term, like I'd rather have a guy like Dowdle or Spears or whatever, but you might be the Kenneth Walker manager who, uh, you know, has already seen someone else snap up Zach Charbonnet. You might be the Aaron mm. Jones manager. Uh, mm. You might be the Devon Achan manager who doesn't know whether he's going to be available in week 12. So if that's the case. I haven't done my rankings yet, but I suspect that Ezekiel Elliott is going to wind up somewhere at around, you know, RB30 to RB37 um, because of the matchup against the Giants, because he is getting touches every week. So if you are in desperate need of a patch mm -hmm. at running back, I think you could do worse than Zeke. So um, while I'm not, you know, really optimistic about his ceiling or his uh, ability to, you know, take you to the promised land in the fantasy playoffs this year, I think he's a decent week 12 uh, answer if you've got major problems at running back. You know, it's funny, Pat. I don't do my rankings until we do the show together either. I don't know if Derek does or not, if he's the odd man out. But I love this because I feel like every Monday part of our process is we come here every Monday, talk about what we saw, talk about what we think we're going to see. And then we all go and, and put more work in. And I think that is just mm -hmm. such a valuable thing to have these conversations. And it's one of my favorite shows that we do all week here at Fantasy Pros. Uh, question two, you know, HN said he could go back into the game. They held him back. Probably the wise thing to do. But Jeff Wilson was a healthy scratch. Is Jeff Wilson somebody to drop Pat at this point? Or is it somebody to still hold just in case? I think you can drop him now that the Dolphins have made clear that they value Salvan Ahmed more than they value Jeff Wilson. So if Jeff Wilson is now basically number four on this depth chart, yeah, not a lot of reason to keep him around. D bro, you want to echo those sentiments? Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, Pat mm -hmm. hit hit it on the uh, the head. Well, don't hit, hit the head on the, the nail. Head. That's probably weird. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't. Yeah, that, that wouldn't work out. Too I mean, well. you could. Um, yeah, it's, you yeah, could. It's, it's just really painful. I think. Um, I will transition this before we get to wide receivers and stuff. Uh, just to note, James Cook, RB9 on the week right now, boys. Yeah, that's right. That's Still right. right All right. Uh, before we get to the wide receivers, too, there's a lot to be thankful for this week. Family, friends, food, and football. All week long at DraftKings Sportsbook is keeping your Thanksgiving week full of action. New customers can bet just five bucks on the NFL action to score 150 instantly in bonus. No matter what your appetite is, there's always something for you. The money line, the parlays, the props, the live bets, and so much more. You name it, they've got it. And don't forget, Tuesday on our Betting Pros channel, we have got a Thanksgiving special. Andrew Erickson and I are going to take you through all the games, including Black Friday. A little bonus action for you. So DraftKings is a great way to get involved and take that knowledge and go make some cash. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use that promo code FANTASYPROS and new customers can bet just five bucks on the NFL Thanksgiving action to score 150 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings, an official sports betting partner of the NFL with that promo code fantasy pros. The crown is yours. Let's crown some wide receivers going forward for week 12 in the NFL. Pop Douglas, we've talked about ad nauseum. He was our waiver wire pick of the week two weeks ago. Last week, if you were smart, you snuck him through for nothing, for nothing, because he was on a buy. He is still just 46% rostered. I don't want to spend more time on him because it's becoming the Pop Douglas show. But Debro, give people the, the 20 second pitch one more time if they haven't gone out and reached out for some Pop Douglas. Why, 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 why do you hate your fantasy team? Why, why do you, <laughs> why? If you have not added Pop Douglas <clears throat> at well, this but because point. Because I think people look at it, D, and they say it's the New England Patriots offense. They stink and they're not wrong. Okay. So that, no, they are wrong. How do you come they, back to they, that argument? They're wrong on Pop because, okay, fine, it stinks. He does not stink. The last three games mm -hmm. or three of the four games, he has been a starter. 
Wide receiver 29, 27, and 23. Zero touchdowns. He scores in any one of those weeks. You're talking about a wide receiver two in fantasy, and all of his numbers, his usage usage metrics, also go along with the wide receiver two evaluation. And these next three weeks, I wrote this up in the waiver wire column. He is going to make you sorry you did not pick him up. The last, the next three matchups, the Giants, the Chargers, and the Steelers, all rank inside the top ten and PPR points per target allowed to slot wide receivers. Pop Douglas, pick him up. Pat, You're anything not gonna to be happy add with on the don't. Douglas front? No, um, and I, I don't think we should be too concerned if the Patriots wind up making a QB change before nope. uh, that game mm-hmm. and go to Bailey Zappi. Like, because I think Demario Douglas's role is uh, as sort of a short area possession receiver guy rather than a vertical receiver. Like, I think he's going to do equally well with either of those quarterbacks. Yeah, so, that's the um, kind of offense that Zappi ran in college anyway. Yeah, just right, quick right. outs, throwing the football all over the place kind yep. of thing. You know, so I, I yeah, so it doesn't really concern me. No worries. Yeah, I like I agree with you, bro. Demario Douglas. Pop, Dem- I'll Demar- say this just to, to contextualize this for people. Are you his agent? Pop- I just want to get 10% I, look, on this. I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, if I he was, be. I'd be making some quiche over the next <laughs> few weeks. But I'll say this to close the Pop Douglas segment uh, every week Pop Douglas is just basically New England Josh Downs. There's no difference. Okay. So how much you want to spend on him if he's still available in terms of what you have remaining fab? We're going to like 10% range? 10 to 12%. Same and thing you for you, can Pat? go more aggressive, 15 if yeah, you need I'm, to. I'm good with that. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, our next guy on our list to talk about today, which this is fun for me because I haven't gotten to do this all year because the guys have been pretty right about everything. I mean, you guys have been spot on in this show. I got to give you a ton of credit. But there's one guy, you know, a couple weeks ago, I said, I was like, why don't we add this guy just to add him? Because, you know, (laughs) they did spend money on him in the offseason. So you guys laughed at me in week nine and he scored a touchdown. You're like, oh, who cares? You just scored a touchdown. You didn't do anything else. And then you guys laughed at me in week 10 and he scored another touchdown and you laughed at me. And now it's after week 11, we are here and he had four catches on seven targets for 116 yards. Did not have a touchdown, but now the tight end is out for the year for the Baltimore Ravens, which brings us back. Once again, to Odell Beckham Jr., 41% rostered. So I understand it's a new day. Yes, it is. It's a different situation now that Andrews is out, so more targets are available. So Pat Fitzmorris, now in week 12, can I interest you in a little OBJ? <laughs> I'm still mad at OBJ for that holding penalty that wiped out the long day <laughs> oh, flowers. Oh, oh, oh. Although, although that was a phantom was, call. Was if phantom we're being holding, honest. okay. It was a phantom Can't even get mad at him. But uh, yeah, Joe, when you were touting OBJ, you did not uh, you did not tell me that Mark Andrews was going to sustain a season ending injury. So, yes, the not. Andrews injury does script. make it does make Beckham uh, more appealing. <laughs> He's got this shoulder issue, though, that's kind of concerning. And I I think injuries always have to be a concern with Odell that you're going to lose him in game because uh, the guy does seem to pick up something new pretty much every time he goes out on the onto the field. (laughs) But he's old. That's what happens when we all go out and play sports now. Like we always pick up some kind of injury. Real point. Real talk. Real talk. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I do think he's a more viable selection now, especially in, uh, you know, the, the deeper leagues where mm. the, the player penetration is greater and there's not a lot out there on the waiver wire. Like Beckham is a guy who still might be out there in those types of leagues. And yeah, now that there's no Mark Andrews, uh, Lamar's got to get the ball to someone. And I, I don't think Isaiah likely is getting all of that target spillover no. from Mark Andrews. No. So, yeah, we're going to see more go to the wide receivers. And uh, OBJ is pretty much the number two wide out on this team now. Well, look, it's also veteran. It's also the time of year here where, like it or not, the Ravens are kind of in a dogfight for this division. Now, the Bengals are dropped off without Joe Burrow. That's that's going to be the end of them. I think we can finally kind of say that. Mm-hmm. So now you've got, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers hanging around and the Browns who don't seem to be going anywhere. So, Debro, I think this is what you do. You lean on these veterans down the stretch. And Odell is that veteran. Zay Flowers is a rookie. Andrews is gone. I'm not saying that Odell Beckham is winning you leagues. I'm saying that he is a viable starting fantasy wide receiver. He's got three straight weeks of double digit half PPR points, and you can't ignore that considering what the trend could be going forward. 
No, we can't ignore that. And I and I love the the the, the, God, the subtle... defeat in your voice makes me so happy. God, that was amazing. I just that fills my heart with joy. That was so great. Yeah, I'm glad one of us is filled with something this morning, <sighs> Joe. Um, I love the subtle comparison of OBJ as Thanos that you made. That it's inevitable <laughs> that no matter what we do, we'll arrive back to the same point. And I mean, you're, you're not wrong, man. I mean, look at OBJ. Over the last, uh, since week nine, he's second on the team in target share, 18%, first in area yard share. He's just been a part-time player at 50% route run rate. And that's my big, my biggest concern the entire time is that he's walking this tightrope and any week the bottom could fall out. But to your point... That's what we want out of our wide receiver threes and our flexes. Yeah. The, the, there's volatility, but the high end upside is there. So I, I concede, Joe. And the touchdown this is equity my is there. concession I love, thank you. right now. And yes, the pain is real, but you're right. <laughs> if you're you right, watch I can't that show, it. What We Do right. in the Shadows, which is such a great show. If you're looking for a binge over the holidays, please watch it. There's an energy vampire named Colin Robinson, and he feeds off of other people's misery when he's telling them boring stories about, you know, running for comptroller in his local is that you? election. Right now, I feel like him. I feel like I've just <laughs> I've gotten stronger from your pain. It was great. Uh, now, if Zach Charbonnet was the unofficial like uh, hero mascot, whatever of this program, the last I don't know six weeks, the official mascot has to be Jaden Reed because we talked about him yes. every single week. Now here we are, and the roster percentage has not climbed to where it should have. Uh, we have been pounding the table for this guy. Forty three percent rostered over on Sleeper right now. So last two weeks. 16 half PPR points yesterday, 17 half PPR points, five of five, two weeks ago, four of six. Again, the artist totals are fluctuating. He had a touchdown that last game, but the, here's the wrinkle. He led the team in rushing yards, three carries for 46. I don't think I don't want to press you, Pat, because I know this is your Packers here. So Jaden Reed getting the ball in different ways. Debro, what does this mean here for his value? Let's say Beckham's on the board. I mean, let's say Reed's on the board. How do you approach those two guys in terms of fab budget remaining? I, I'm I'm spending more uh, for Reed, and okay. um, I mean, and I, I, I outlined that here on the show outline. OBJ two to four percent, you know, that's fine. Like you want to go get him, that's okay. But like Jay and Reed is more of a six to eight percent spend. And what we've seen just over and over and time and time again, it, it, again drawing corollaries here. Jay and Reed is basically just the Packers version of Rashid Shahid. He's this guy who. Pops off for big games, has red zone usage, has these big games, and now we're seeing the rushing equity on top of that. And again, like we're talking about what, what I was mentioning with Pop, he's got fantastic matchups upcoming, Joe. Yeah. He gets the Lions and the Giants coming up in two of the next three games. Those two teams are, again, inside the top 10 in PPR points per target allowed to slot wide receivers. So Jay and Reed, yeah, spend up. And if you need the high end upside in your flex or your wide receiver three spot, he's a good candidate. Pat, is Jaden Reed potentially the Wish.com version of Debo Samuel in this offense going forward? They might need him to be that, Joe, because they lost uh, Aaron Jones to an in-game injury in Week 11. They lost third-string running back Emmanuel Wilson to an in-game mm-hmm. injury in Week 11. They're left with basically just A.J. Dillon at running back, and he's a very one-dimensional, between-the-tackles type of grinder. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they reprised that role that Jaden Reed had in the running game for them in Week 11, and we saw more of that Um you know, plus Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson are vertical receivers. Like Reed is a guy they can get the ball to, um, you know, closer to the line of scrimmage and let him make magic happen after the catch. Dude is a playmaker. Like Jaden Reed is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the the main issue with him and the reason we haven't recommended bigger fab spends is that he doesn't really play in two wide receiver sets. Right. And the Packers also like to rotate in Dontavian Wicks, a, a rookie mm-hmm. they like. He had some moments well. yesterday so too. Yeah, he he did ninety one receiving yards. So mm-hmm. um, Reed though is for sure very good, and I think with the injuries they have at running back, they're going to need to get him more involved Thursday against the Lions. And by the way, the Lions are really good against the run. Not that great against the pass. So uh, it it might be the Packers attacking Detroit through the air, in which case Jaden Reed could play a pretty prominent role. Does Wicks have any value, Pat? Just out of curiosity to you. I don't know. 
I don't think so. Just the snap shares are not big enough, Joe. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he had those 91 yards on three catches. There's just not <laughs> enough target upside. Well, speaking of that conversation, I want to kind of branch that over to the next guy we're going to talk about, which is Khalil Shakir of the Buffalo Bills. Now, this is the difference between watching the games and seeing what's going on and just seeing stat lines and chasing what happened last week. 80 one yards of the 115 came on one big play and it was a great play Shakir had a great touchdown run there against a very tough secondary the New York Jets the Buffalo Bills offense looked much better I guess the question Pat here is you know with this player right now in his current situation 21% roster that's very little there's a thought process one could put forth which is throw a couple bucks maybe on Shakir and as this new Joe Brady offense continues to develop Shakir becomes more of a piece of that is that worth doing, or is this still a guy that's just, I guess, too difficult to peg down right now going forward for the fantasy stretch run time? If you have the room, I could see it, but I think it would probably take an injury to one of the Bills' other wide receivers to make Shakir someone you would feel mm-hmm. good about starting. Um, because right now, Shakir isn't, you know, like his big stat line in Week 11 notwithstanding. Um it's not so much about the fantasy value he's producing. It's more about him uh, completely kneecapping Gabe Davis in this offense mm-hmm. right now, because Gabe Davis has been like a ghost for the last three weeks. Um, but like, I, I still don't think you could start Shakir now. It would probably take some sort of other event for him to become fantasy viable. Debro, any situation where you're interested in Shakir or would you rather be spending on guys like, let's say, Rashid Shahid or Josh Palmer this week? I would rather spend on Shahid over Shakir, but I would rather have Shakir over Josh Palmer. And it just comes down to like at this point of the season, we need healthy players like Josh Palmer is a good stash coming up because Chargers have had no answer without him in the lineup. I mean, it's basically been Keenan Allen and you can even say it's Austin Eckler going with him this week. He can get any targets. It's just the Keenan Allen show. So Josh Palmer is a fine stash, but he's not going to help you win next week, the week after that. So if you need the points in your lineup, Shakir's the guy I want to go with and throw this out there. Like his matchups upcoming aren't fantastic, but this week, um, well, say week 12, he gets the uh, Philadelphia Eagles who've allowed the most receiving yards to opposing slot wide receivers. So mm-hmm. can Shakir two of the last four games, guys, he's had over 90 receiving yards. I know some of the production has been fluky, but still it's the bills. If Gabe Davis is not popping off for big games, then it's Shakir because Stefan Diggs has also been held uh, contained the last few weeks too. Pat, with the injury to uh, Cooper Cup in this game with that ankle injury, uh, some interesting names still floating around again, like Tutu Atwell. Is that a guy now that becomes relevant again? Uh, also, Zay Jones was returning from his injury. Noah Brown was out this week, but certainly had two massive games. Like for the other remaining names that might be out there on waiver wires with varying lower levels of roster percentage. Who stands out to you that's still out there at wide receiver that maybe this week with all the holiday chaos, you know, people forget all the madness people are traveling. You might be able to slide some of these names through and people might not even be putting in waivers in your league because they just plain forget because it's Wednesday and before Thanksgiving games. Yeah, uh, Tutu is interesting for sure because we saw him be fantasy viable when Cooper Cup was out early in the season. Um I don't know about Zay Jones. I mean, he's sort of this red zone specialist, sort of touchdown or bust. You don't feel really confident about starting a guy like that. Noah Brown, we just don't know what his role is going to be because he was number four on the depth charts when everyone was healthy. And now everyone's healthy again. Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Robert Woods. So maybe Noah Brown is back to being number four, in which case he's getting you know fewer than 50% uh, snap share. And I will say Josh Palmer is kind of interesting to me because he's only got one more week on IR before he's eligible to come off, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, as much as the Chargers have been scraping for a second option and man, Quentin Johnston is literally letting a golden opportunity slip through his fingers. um, Like Palmer is going to walk right back into a pretty substantial, you know, target share. Yeah, I would agree on that one. Uh, Cardinals wide receivers. Uh, quick question, rapid fire. Would you drop Michael Wilson for Rondell Moore? I know Moore had one catch, but it was a 48-yard touchdown catch. Debro going forward, would you rather drop Wilson for Moore? I would, because I don't know when we see okay. Michael Wilson. He's been dealing with a shoulder injury for weeks. Yeah. Same thing for you, Pat? I don't want to. Okay. I, I, and, and I love Rondell Moore. I was such a big <laughs> fan of his at Purdue, but um, like his – 
targets, most of them. And, uh, you know, I know he caught a bomb for his one catch yesterday, Mm -hmm. a long touchdown. But most of his targets are within like five yards of the line of scrimmage. Michael Wilson's targets have been more valuable than Rondell Moore's targets. All right, let's get to the streamers for week 12 to help you out. Let's start with the quarterbacks. Debro, who's your streaming QB for Thanksgiving week? You're in Jire Straits, man. You could possibly pick up Tutu Atwell and Matthew Jire Stafford. Straits. I think he played for the. Uh, <laughs> I think he played for the. Was it Eastern Tennessee Pat a couple years ago? I want to say Jire Straits. I mean, if that, if I Google that, I guarantee I'm going to find a, a college player with the name Jire Straits. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Key and Peele skit. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Uh, but Jair Jair Alexander crossed with Mark Knopfler or Devin. Basically, Streets? yeah. Interesting. The yeah. Of okay. Swim. Yeah. Well, the salt in a swat could be uh, Matthew Stafford this week. So looking at him and Tutu Atwell, you could pick both these guys up, possibly stream both of them. And looking at Matthew Stafford's matchup, I mean, since week um, walking into this week, since week five, the Arizona Cardinals have been top five in passing touchdowns, yards per attempt, all the things. So Matthew Stafford, it might not be pretty guys, but he's a guy you could pick up at start. I'm going to have to make a player at Madden named Jair Straits because that's just a like, fun name. Uh, Pat, Great. And he's going to run for 350 stream. against me. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> just wonderful <laughs> times. Just my wonderful times. times. God. That is the show everybody needs. And this offseason, we need to stream Debro and myself playing Madden uncensored because mm-hmm. that, my friends, that is. You want it? I don't gold. need that in my life. I don't, I don't well, need I a joke. I want Well, you stream me and Bogman because that those are hilarious conversations, too. And. Usually Bogman beats my ass. I'm not gonna lie. Like Bogman. Like if I beat Bogman, I like I'm like, okay, we're good. I'm gonna walk away now. Just walk away from the game. Pat, who are you walking towards in week twelve? Jordan Love against the Detroit okay. Lions for the reason mentioned before, without Aaron Jones and uh, Emmanuel Wilson. It's only gonna be AJ Dillon and whoever else the Packers pick up off the street, I guess, this week. Um, And we can expect the Packers to be pass heavy uh, against the Lions defense that is better against the run than against the pass anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. Who's your tight end to stream in week 12, Pat? Isaiah Likely. Uh, He is going to walk right into a very substantial role without Mark Andrews. Again, he's not going to get all the targets that Mark Andrews saw, but he's going to get a lot of them. And I, I think Isaiah likely is, you know, going to be sniffing at the uh, the edge of tight end one value here. Derek, who's your streamer tight end for week 12? I'm just going to go right back to the Kate Otten. Well, I mean, what are we seeing for Kate mm-hmm. Otten? He's got four times this year, at least four receptions and 40 receiving yards. And that might not sound great. You had a touchdown to any one of those. He's a tight end one for the week. Now he gets Indy uh, ninth most fantasy points per game and receiving yards per game allowed to tight ends. Very good streamer. All right. How about defense? Who are we streaming this week, Derek? I know we just saw our boy Tommy D uh, do well against the Commanders, Tommy but this D. is not the Commanders. Looking at the New England Patriots, I'm going to stream them because as good as Tommy D did, still nine sacks, yeah. baby. And the Patriots are fifth in blitz rate. They're going to get after the quarterback. All right, Pat, how about you? Who are you streaming for defense this week? Oh, uh, let's see. Since uh, Debro took the Patriots off the table, I'll go with the Denver Broncos and, and yeah, we'll target Dorian Thompson Robinson. Uh, DTR only had one interception and one sack yesterday, but he also averaged 3.8 yards per pass attempt. So Oof. this is a very limited quarterback we're talking about here. And uh, the Denver defense, much improved in uh, yeah. the last How about that month, month and a half. What do you think of this Bronco turnaround the last few weeks? It's remarkable. Stunning, right? I mean, did did that look like a team we would be talking about as a playoff contender when they were what one and five? <laughs> mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. And that's Amazing. why you got to be patient with the process. You know, people are killing Sean Payton too. Oh, Sean Payton's passes. Oh, probably man. Can't coach anymore. Apparently that was a little early folks. Apparently that was a little early. I never understood that. Like give the guy a season here. And Russell Wilson looks like a player. Also, he does you see him on the sidelines, a much different character, much different demeanor than I think you saw mm-hmm. uh, last season, especially. All right, let's get to the top five guys of the week. We want to add for those people who have waivers still uh, Pat, take us through your top five guys. What's the order of adding them this week? So Zach Charbonnet, clear number one for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll I'll put Ty Chandler at number two. Okay. Uh, Demari- Demario Douglas at number three. And then number four and number five. Couldn't decide how to order <laughs> these guys, but I've got Isaiah Likely, number four, and Jaden Reed, number five. All right, Debro, how about you? The top five ads of the week for those people with waiver wire priorities. Uh, Charbonnet is the king of the hill. He's number one. I'm going to go Pop Douglas, number two. Rashid Shahid number three. I am going to sneak Isaiah Likely in here at four <laughs> and bring up Jaden Reed as five. I understand people are, well, where the heck is Ty Chandler? But 
He didn't play a lot of snaps. Madison's not going away. So I'm going to push him down the board a little bit. And don't forget, everybody, make sure you're going and checking out the waiver wire article over at fantasybros.com. We have the waiver wire rankings up too, and everything gets adjusted. So after Monday night's game, we're still going to have more adjustments going. Everything will always be updated for you to make the best decisions you can and use my playbook for the waiver assistant also uh, and all the other amazing tools, including autopilot. This is the time of year where you might not have time to set some lineups. You don't want to miss out on news if you are busy traveling, busy visiting family, busy you know, stuffing and cuffing because, you know, that's what you do. Uh, if you're busy doing thought, any of those activities, which is... I thought it was cuffing and stuffing, Joe. Is it, oh, is it cuffing and stuffing? Oh, you're right. It's cuffing it and stuffing. Oh, I'm it sorry. Is. Just, so just making sure that we're correct here, okay? You gotta get right if for you're busy cuffing, If you're busy cuffing and stuffing, which is, again, your own business in your own house, then <laughs> make sure that you're using autopilot so that way you know exactly that you are setting your best lineup at all times. You're not missing any kind of news. Download my playbook, fantasybros.com slash my playbook, or just download the app, sync your leagues. It's never too late to sync your leagues. We've got over a million leagues synced. It's unbelievable. And 950,000 of them are Derek Browns. Uh, last thing here, the listener mailbag uh, over at fantasypros.com slash chat, where you can join us every single day talking football for free. And of course, premium members get extra access to us. What, what a joy in life that is to have extra access for us. Um, listener mailbag from FF times five. I have Burrow. Do I drop Jeff Wilson for Gino to get ahead of the potential long-term injuries? Well, here's the problem now is the Gino injury. So, so let's talk about it. Who would be in a Joe Burrow vacuum here in a single quarterback league? the guy that you'd most want to pluck off a waiver wire. Pat, is there a name that really pops to you in terms of like available quarterbacks that might be a, a good streamer the rest of the season? Uh, Jordan Love, because we don't know. Like, I think this mm. Aaron Jones injury might be multi-week. Oh, and I think, I think it is. It's going to make the Packers skew very pass heavy the rest of the way. So uh, Love Love for me is a guy I think it moves into the high, high-end quarterback two range the next mm-hmm. few weeks. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Derek? Is there another name besides Love that you want to throw out there, too? You think people could feel good about? Like, you're not going to replace Burrow, but can you get somebody on that fringe? I mean, Kyler is rostered in too many leagues, so he's out of contention. But is there somebody else? I mean, I think you'd look to Love first if he's out there. But then if if he's I always not out to there, love first. you're so I always do. You're what? 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 what I don't know. I, I look to Love, you I know, because I mean, <laughs> it's that time of year. It's the holidays, Derek. I, I have no words for you, Dave. No words for you. No words I'm for you at all. I'm on your energy again. That's no what. words for you. Like, my soul is getting sucked out. Um, all right, so who's your guy? This week, if it's not going love for multi-weeks, it's really coming down to uh, who you're, you're piecing it together week to week. So I would look to Stafford this week over love. And DTR also, like, it, look, I'm not telling you that the stat line was great, but we do know the, the mobility's there. And the Browns had no issue letting him throw 43 times in a game where they were leading for almost the entire game. So if he Mm -hmm. can, if he can improve some of the other ancillary metrics and things like that, like over the weeks, the mobility is there and the volume could be there as well. I'll throw out Russell Wilson, too. That's another name I think could be viable down the stretch, too. Decent schedule for him, too. That'll do it for us, everybody. But the story of the game goes on. For Derek Brown and Pat Fitzmaurice, I'm Joey P. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And get all those waiver wire claims in. We'll see you next time, kids.